Hey guys, this is Andre with the Andre Lifestyle. Welcome back to my channel. This is a self-improvement channel where I document and educate my audience on what I've experienced in the military, the health and fitness rules that I live by, the self-improvement books that I've read, and the travel destinations that I recommend. Subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with new great content every week. Hey guys, it's your boy Andre. This is going to be a Q&A uh, with Jordan Child. He's another YouTuber and uh, what's so unique about him is that he is documenting his whole entire experience from the very beginning. Uh, it, him transitioning from a civilian in, into the military and uh, you guys should definitely check him out. He puts out great content and uh, yeah. So uh, if you guys like my videos, I know you guys are going to like his videos. And um, so yeah, show him some love, subscribe to his channel. I'm going to provide links to his, his YouTube channel and uh, subscribe to my channel if you're new. And yeah, I'm sorry about the super long intro, but let's get right into this video. Let's do it. Here we go. All right. So Cooper Christian asked, how do you plan on becoming an officer in the Coast Guard? So for people who haven't been watching my video, basically, um, I'm trying to apply to C-SPY SLRP. I'm still waiting to get my waiver. Uh, it's been about a month or so, so I'm waiting to hear back on that. Hopefully it comes through, and then I'll apply to that. Results come out in January. Um, if I don't get my waiver, then I'll just apply to OCS. Those results come out in March. And I'm waiting. Well, it really depends. I, I'm thinking about enlisting at the same time, but uh, my parents have a different mindset, so we'll see what happens. Um, but as things progress, I will definitely keep you guys updated. All right, so my turn. Yeah. Sean Grover asks, what are the odds for special assignments and how do I get to go on one like Pat for Swall or any tactical team? And what rate would get me the best opportunity to travel? And I think you and I can answer this. And I know you did some research on this. For yeah. me, um, like I was telling you before with uh, Pat for Swall, um, during boot, the only reason why I know the what I know about Pat for Swall was when I went to boot camp. At the end of boot camp, you got to meet your company commanders. Like they were, they were out of character. Like when when they're at boot, when I mean by that is that during boot camp, they're you know they're yelling at you, they're really strict on you, right? And you know, but towards the end, like we at uh, week seven and eight. They're really cool. Like you get to actually talk to them. Okay. Um, like they actually talk to you like people. That was really, <laughs> like real really people. cool. Yeah, it was really, really cool. So a lot of people wanted to go the tactical route and wanted to be, you know, like, um, you know what I mean? Like um, police officers that they ended up getting out. So they okay. wanted like the tactical training. So a lot of them asked me about Pat Force Swall. And we had an ME um, who was one of our, com our company commanders. And so he answered a lot of the questions about Pat Force Wall. And what I learned was that if you decide to, it's a, like you said, it's a volunteer position. Yeah. If you volunteer for this and you are chosen, then um, you're going to go overseas and uh, in Bahrain and um, you're going to be there for at least a year. And from my understanding, once you get back, once you do your tour and you do that one year, um, you are, you get first pick on any A school list nice. of your choosing. That's yeah. Awesome. So, so that, you know, that what's so important about that is that, cause I even thought about it too, but what's so important about, I didn't do it because I'm married, you know, I don't yeah. want to be away for, I don't know. Just no, that makes but, sense. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, That's yeah different for but, you. um, right, right. But if you're a single guy and you want to, you know, have you want a head start on your military career mm -hmm. and you don't want to wait to go to a school and you want experience right away, mm -hmm. Pat Force Swall is for you because the second you get back, you're the first one in any A school list, which means, let's say you want to do aviation. Aviation right now, enlisted, is a two-year wait. Ooh. There's people waiting two years. I didn't know that. As a non-rate. Yeah, as a non-rate. That's a long time. Two, yeah, for two years to, to get on the A school list. And then it's even worse if you want to go, you know, um, I'm trying to see other rates. I mean, there's way worse. There's some I know rates, HS like three is years. real bad. Oh yes, yes. That's HS what I was, is yeah, always yeah. packed. That's like three years right there. And, <laughs> and what's um, uh, what was that other one? Media. What's it? What's it called? Uh, PA. In, 
Public PA, affairs? PA, PA, PA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see you got it. You did. So you <laughs> know, you research, know what you're talking man. about. Yeah, you do. But yeah, PA, um, that's like three or four years, I think. Something mm. like that. Or you're a non-rate for that long. So yeah. going to Pat Force Swall, you're immediately on the A school list. You just wait one year and immediately at the top of the A school list. So that's what's pretty cool about that's that. That's not bad. Um, as for the second part of his question, what does he ask? He asks, what are the rates that he, would the best get me the best, to travel. Yeah. best opportunity to travel? Want me to take that okay. one? Okay. Yeah, yeah, you know. All right, so Sean Grover. So from my research, just going through the Gold Coast Guard website, basically um, some rates like IT, ET, HS, and CS can kind of vary. You can kind of be on a ship or you can be um, at sector. And kind of go both ways, but boats was mate, gunners mate, uh, damage control, and MK. From my research, those yep. are on cutters for sure. Absolutely, um, you're gonna be on cutters, yeah, most likely, and uh, you're gonna have a lot of sea time and travel. Mm -hmm. It's all over. They have their positions for 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 those those rates all over. Um, so yeah, absolutely. There you go, Sean. Um, all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically it, the answer to your question, Sean. All right, so uh, Diane. Diane T. asks, uh, my college major is emergency management. Do you know anything about EM and the Coast Guard, uh, specifically in an officer position? Would I apply to a broader career, example, operations of short response, and then see if a position similar to my major opens up? Or basically, uh, she wants to know, how does she ensure that the job she gets in the Coast Guard is similar to her major? So... Uh, just going through the Go Coast Guard website, um, on the officer side, if you go to OCS, it lists the four uh, main type of assignments. You got prevention, response, uh, aviation, and cutter. And just by looking at prevention and response, I think that's really similar to emergency management. Um, they both mention, uh, I believe, pollution investigation, which is definitely an emergency. That's something that happens not very often and a big deal. And it also mentions for response, I believe, um, incident management. So incident management and emergency management, basically the same thing. So I would choose those two assignments, but as far as getting that assignment to pertain to your major, uh, it kind of comes to need of the service and it kind of comes to how you perform at OCS. So uh, when you go to OCS, you compete for a job and I'm just assuming like how you perform physically, um, out in the field and in the classroom, they're probably going to rank you some type of way. I'm not sure exactly how they rank you, but I'm assuming they're going to rank you, and if you're at the top of the class, you're going to have priority for whatever job for sure. you want to go. Yeah, so mm -hmm. if you rank towards the top, and you're going to have more priority of uh, which job you want. And I'm just assuming if you're not towards the top, you could get the job you want, or it's probably going to be to the needs of the service. So I know for me, I want to go aviation. So if I want to go that route, i got to kick butt at OCS, just plain and simple, because a lot of people want to go that route, but everyone's not going to get it. But just because you might not get the job that you want, I wouldn't let that deter you um, because you're never going to know what you might get if you don't try. So I would just keep that in mind. Um, hope that answers your question. And yeah. All right, bro. All right. Well said. All right. Let me see mine. I got to click it. I know you don't see me right now. <laughs> no worries. Stellar. No worries. <laughs> this guy. Stellar. <laughs> As F. As F. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 19 and planning on joining when I'm 21. I was going to talk to a recruiter in November. Being that it's my birthday month, is this too early? Too late to see a recruiter being that I won't want to be sworn in for another year? Also, would you recommend making an appointment with a recruiter before going to the office? And what should one bring to the interview? Um, he has in parentheses, resume, college placement scores, etc. I have not yet taken the ASVAB. Okay, so mm -hmm. for this, let me just read that real quick. Let me answer the question for question. Uh, for me, honestly, from my experience, I will, me at 18 and me, uh, let me, let me go back on the screen. Okay, for me, honestly, me at 18, the way I think at at age 18 and the way I the way I thought age 18 and the way I think at age 23 are night and day <laughs> uh, when I was 18 I didn't do much research and if you watch my videos on my channel I'm always talking about doing your research because I've made many many mistakes yeah. so 
Um, I definitely recommend people to join at a later time because you're a different le- mindset, your know, d- maturity true, level. True. And, uh, you, and if you join at a different, uh, diff- at a, uh, that's not everybody, right? Yeah, but right. for most people I'm, that I've encountered, uh, the younger the age, the more immature they are. So I don't, I don't think there's any problem with anyone joining at age 21 or age 23, age 25, as long like as you know exactly what you want to do yep. and you know exactly yep. what you're getting yourself into and you've done the research. Like for you, Jordan, I can already tell, man, <laughs> you know exactly what you're talking about. You know, exa- you've done your research. Oh yeah. Like with you, I, I just from talking to you, I can already tell that, um, you definitely know what you're doing. So that's the answer is first part of his question. All right. uh, solid yeah, answer, it's, solid it's not, answer. Yeah, it's not too late. It's or it's not too early or too late. So you have plenty of time. Mm-hmm. Um, also, would you recommend making an appointment with a recruiter for any of the? For me, uh, the first time I met with my recruiter, let me wait for this. The first time I met with my recruiter, I it was just a walk in. Um, I just walked in. And I just let them know, hey, this is what, this is my 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 case. Um, I want to have a conditional release from the army, and I want to join the Coast Guard. And I just that that was it. And from then on, uh, it was all by appointment. From then on, yeah. I always set up an appointment, and what was really my recruiter um, was an FS1 um, food service specialist. Uh, first they class. call that CS now. Yeah, they call CS. it. They, yeah, I'm so, so, so yeah. used to calling it that. No, no yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. They do. Like I said, you know you've done your <laughs> research, man. And uh, he retired recently. Anyways, he lives in Orlando now. But uh, he was stationed in Washington, D.C. And he was awesome. And I just remember he told me, um, I'm not going to be calling you. I'm not going to make sure that you're, you've you done what I asked you to do. It's up to you if, how badly you want to join the Coast Guard. So I would always set up appointments, always follow up with him. And I think it took maybe two or three months for me to switch from the army to the coast guard, just Not like bad. that. Not bad. Yeah. So, um, you don't have to set up an appointment, but it is a good idea. I mean, just, and, and like you said, uh, like the question he's asking, should I bring any, what should I bring with me? For me, honestly, um, bring, bring like a, bring some, que- have some questions ready. Yeah. Um, yep. be asked m- as many questions as you can. When you first meet with a recruiter, um, what kind of bonuses do they offer? What kind of jobs? Uh, would the, have a job already in mind mm-hmm. before you even uh, see a recruiter. Don't just go in there blind. Make sure you know. You, okay, you, when he asks you questions, like when you asking him questions, you kind of know having a good understanding before he gives you an answer. Uh, let yeah, me see. Stay on that Go Coast Guard website because that's what I did, man. When I first mm-hmm. went in, like you said, I had a list of stuff I want to talk about, and I basically studied that website feels like almost mm-hmm. so you're right on point definitely know what you want to do beforehand so they yeah. can kind of guide you but you have an idea what you want to do it's honestly it's a responsibility of definitely the person applying to, to be in the coast guard like if you really if you want to join the coast, it's your response you're in charge of your career no one's gonna hold your hand and help you through the process or like if you want to get paid in the coast guard no one's going to be looking out for you it's up to mm-hmm. you to make sure that everything's in place everything is is the way it's supposed to be so just do your research guys everybody please do your research (laughs) because it's that's important you need to know yeah you need to know what you're getting yourself into good there's good times there's bad times you need to understand the negatives and the positives of every aspect of the military of the coast guard of any military branch that you that you want to join um yeah, it's really rewarding, and I know that many, many people are going to, if you decide to join, mm-hmm. it's a huge, huge um, opportunity uh, for, you know, just exploration and travel and, you know, just adventure, and um, you're going to meet a lot of good people, so, yeah. Definitely, definitely. All right, man, uh, last question I have for you is, have you really learned anything? Are there any little things... Um, Besides doing your research, any little things that you'd like to share for uh, your followers and mine? Uh, any, and I didn't even think about this. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, I put you let on the see. spot. No, no, let me see. Um, let me see. 
anything, any tips or tricks for anyone? I guess, like, uh, maybe at your first duty station, like, what's important that you do? Like, or any qualifications or anything like that? Like, stuff you should keep out for? Oh, my gosh. So, it it all depends what kind of... Um, it, it just it just differs from, from place to place. So, okay. for instance, if you're a non-rate on a fast response cutter like me, man, you're going to have it really tough. So, mm-hmm. you, you have to think about it at, like... And I think I've talked to you in private, Jordan, about yeah. this, where... where I, you know, there's 21 people on a fast response cutter. Mm -hmm. So that means there's two non rates. So since there's two non rates there, you have like, you know, 19 bosses. Yeah. Yeah. And I (laughs) I told you that. And so it all, it differs. Like it differs from, from station to station. So there's some people that are non rates that graduated around the same time that I did and they're on base Mm -hmm. and they're straight up chilling. Like every day (laughs) they get to go home yeah. And they get to sleep in in their beds, and it's all cool. They don't have to go out to sea, and they're just waiting to go to A school, right? right. Whereas uh, a non a fast response cutter, you're out at sea all the time, and so it's it's a different. I mean, it, there's positives and negatives. To, oh yeah, to like I'm sure. every, you know what I mean. Yeah. So, and there's some non rates that go to air stations for their first duty station, and right, lucky. you know, there's people. Yeah, there's people <laughs> living it up in Alaska, <laughs> and there's people on big cutters huge cutters that are you know gone away from their wives and families for four to six months Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it all depends what you get and um so when you when you put on your dream sheet in boot camp yeah this is this is something that people should know okay make sure um make sure you you've you like again you've done your (laughs) research on it but make sure that um you know what you're getting yourself into because on my dream sheet, I put in my I put in uh, Florida, and I said I spoke uh, Spanish fluently. Okay. And uh, I got Miami. You nice. see, <laughs> so it also and then, but then again, out. oh yeah, yeah, exactly, definitely. Um, but then there's other people where they put Florida. They didn't put that they spoke Spanish. I'm not saying you should you should write this if you don't, right. but I mean they ended up getting the complete opposite. They ended up getting Alaska or they ended up getting, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they didn't get what they wanted. So, I mean, don't be discouraged because there's a couple people that are like, man, I can't believe I'm getting, ah, that's not what I wanted. I Mm -hmm. wanted somewhere close to home. I wanted to be in California and they have me in Virginia and uh, I see them now and they're, they're loving it. They're enjoying that a small boat station and they're loving it. So have an open mindset for sure. Yeah. And you just reminded me, um, what's it called the 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 coast guard is what you make of it mm-hmm. if you and that's just life in general that's like you're gonna have, too yeah it's just what you make of it if you have a positive mindset you don't let small things um upset you or or you don't because you're gonna meet good people you're gonna meet bad people and that's mm-hmm. just how it is if you don't let those those people bother you or anything you have to have tough skin and okay. um yeah, yeah. So I, my advice to, to everyone is um, develop some tough skin or just don't join the military, <laughs> you know, because it's not going to be fun. Yeah, it's not all going to be don't. sunshines and rainbows, I'm sure. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Good tips, yeah. man. Good tips. I appreciate yeah. it. Appreciate it. <laughs> I talk a lot. <laughs> no, no worries, man. That's good advice because you're in the Coast Guard. So you can give a lot mm. more advice than I can. I'm all I'm just documenting my experience. So appreciate the chat, man. Thanks for talking Dude. to us. Yo, Jordan, you're gonna do. You're gonna do great things, man. I can already tell. So, um, if anything, this is uh, off the record. If you want to include this in the video or not, but um, I'm glad we met. And yeah, uh, what you're doing is is really good. And your your videos, I'm super impressed with them. And I watch every single one of them. Hey, same to you, man. So, same to you. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, dang this. And you just the editing. Like I say, I always, I always like. Uh, telling him like man that editing's on point i'm not kidding man <laughs> appreciate i wish it. i could do that my, my editing is like like i told you I, my software is so so crappy i wish i could show you my laptop right now it's, yeah. so, it's so bad hey but, but you um, make up for it with the content man i try my best <laughs> so. but yeah all right cool man well for everyone who tuned in who watched the video appreciate you guys for watching appreciate you guys for watching appreciate andre for helping me out 
And uh, yeah, look out for new videos coming soon from Andre's channel and mine. Um, I recently submitted some more medical stuff, so hope to hear back from MEP soon. Hope to hear back about Seaspire OCS. And I'm also going to make some stuff about uh, narratives, resumes, and uh, rec letters. So look out for those videos. And again, thanks, Andre, for uh, helping us out with that Q&A, man. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give this video a thumbs up. Please comment on this video. I love interacting with all the people that watch my videos. Please subscribe to my channel. Share this video. And um, yeah, guys, just I'm going to leave you with this. Remember to always live the lifestyle that you want to live.